What's up, everyone? I'm Stephen Harrell with Tiny House Listings. I am, I guess you could say, a tiny house expert. I've been involved with tiny houses for about 15 years now. And in this video, I really want to quickly kind of go over buying your first tiny house and kind of walk you through that process. I know there's a lot of confusion. It's not like buying a typical house where you just go to a realtor or find yourself someone in the industry to help, you know, go out there and look for a home for you and they walk you through the process everything's kind of like laid out for you and it's not necessarily the case with buying a tiny house there's a couple obstacles and hurdles that you have to go over and go through before you can actually get to the point where you're living in a tiny house that's why it's so important to have someone on your side so tiny house listings that's what it's all about we walk you through the process from beginning to end so in that video i want to kind of show you what that looks like whether you decide to go with us and have us help you do that or you decide to go off and do it on your own uh, you can make that decision for yourself but anyways let's get into it all right so the first thing you want to ask yourself what is a tiny house what's a tiny house what does it look like for you is it on a foundation are you planning to keep that tiny house in the same space for a long time or do you plan on taking it with you or maybe even more importantly do you plan on selling in the future if you are the latter where you plan to take it with you or maybe move it a few times or take it with you in the future then it's absolutely a good idea to have one built on a trailer and you know that was kind of the original pill of living in a tiny house on wheels you can kind of take it with you if you think about it in the past most people lived in the same city their entire lives or for a good for many many years and they also worked at the same job right that's definitely not the case anymore people tend to have more nomadic lifestyles or they make several big moves in, in their career and in their location on average way more than they used to in the past right so it kind of makes sense to have a house that mirrors your lifestyle so that's one of the main benefits of owning and living in a tiny house you can take it with you and so you know the next step that you want to kind of look at is defining your needs what is it that you want and like we spoke before are you someone that's going to actually be moving around but then if you want to go dive a little bit deeper how many people do you plan to have in your tiny house do you plan to have guests that will be coming over regularly or from time to time how much storage do you need all those questions will kind of help you work backwards in terms of what will your tiny house look like do you plan to sit go up in a loft each night or do you prefer downstairs sleeping another thing is what does your lifestyle look like do you plan to cook a lot of meals are you a person that loves to spend a lot of time in the kitchen well maybe you want to allot a little bit more of your square feet to the kitchen area right instead of having a cooktop maybe you want to range now that'll help you determine what the layout looks like whether you're sleeping upstairs in a loft downstairs a lot of those things will really help you out so another thing you want to think about and this is another benefit of living in a tiny house is a long term savings how long do you plan to live in a tiny house if you live in a tiny house for a long time it's going to save you money you hear a lot of people say this well tiny homes don't go up in value that may necessarily be true so if you run the numbers you want to find out are you going to for sure make money if you buy a house now and living it and then later on sell it as appreciation versus living in a tiny house and each month reaping those rewards those financial benefits by living in a tiny house at some point the appreciation versus the money you save by living in a tiny house are going to have a cross like a threshold so if you run the numbers you want to look and find out at what point is that going to happen and how long you need to live in a tiny house before it actually starts to truly save me money having said that while we're on the topic of price and all that or like you know affordability you want to also decide am i going to be a cash buyer or am i going to be financing this tiny house being in the industry for so long we've seen a lot of people there tends to be like some sort of major thing happening that it's catapulted people to the point where they're ready to move into a tiny house they're about to retire or they just got married and they're combining all of their money or maybe they just got out of debt right so that's a big question too you're gonna to be a cash buyer or financing if you work with us we can definitely help you with financing options but if you're a cash buyer that makes it even easier so once you've decided what your tiny house will look like size dimensions layout and you've decided how it is you're gonna pay for it the next thing you want to do is start doing your research. One of the most important things you need to find out is if you're going to buy a new house and have it custom built, or if you're going to buy a used one that you think is a good fit for your needs. Now, whether you're buying a new one or a used one, you need to ensure that it was built by a reputable builder. There's a lot of DIY tiny homes out there, and just because they're DIY doesn't necessarily mean they aren't quality built, but it is a good indicator. So a lot of reputable tiny house builders are going to have good reviews, and they're going to have a track record of happy customers. And not only that, they're going to have certified tiny home but tiny house is certified that greatly increases the likelihood that one you'll be able to finance it and two you'll be able to put it in a tiny house community or even some municipalities are looking for that certification now another part of your research can just be kind of going out there actually taking a look to see what's available now tinyhouselistings.com is the ultimate source in my opinion it's the original source for where tiny homes are being sold in bought over 20,000 tiny homes have actually been sold through our platform We've got a long track record of being in the business and helping people out but you want to go through and look and find what's out there price point price per square foot finishings all that stuff so you want to make sure you're buying from a reputable builder 
and you also want to make sure that you're getting a good deal for what it is you're buying. Now, another thing we just kind of touched on quickly is you want to buy a new home or a used home. Now, if you're buying a new home, you kind of have two options. You can build a spec home. In other words, you can buy a model for the most part. There's not a lot of customizations or you can buy a custom home. Now, if you're going to buy a custom home, just be prepared to pay for it. Tiny house builders, like for us, for example, when you have a model, it's very efficient to build a home that way. There's not a lot of back and forth. Everything's already pre-planned. The people who actually build the homes on the crew have a really good understanding of what that looks like. They have it memorized. You can have templates, all those things, right? Now, if you want a quality built home and keep the price down, I highly recommend going with a model. And a lot of people like ourselves have inventory of models. So basically you pick out the one you want and we send it your way. Now it's gonna definitely help on the price. Now if you want custom, you have to realize there's a lot of overhead in custom. When you get the quote from a home that you've decided that it's gonna be this way and that way and I want this thing and I want that thing but I don't want this, it increases the overhead for a tiny house builder exponentially. So just be prepared to pay for that. But if you have the budget, not a bad way to go. Now there are some legal considerations that you have to consider when buying a tiny house. The biggest thing is gonna be the local building codes and the local zoning restrictions. Typically, the closer you are to a city or the closer you are to a heavily populated area Area, the zoning restrictions and the building restrictions are going to go up and the reason that is there's a lot of homes that tend to be more valuable and they, the people who live there and HOAs and the people on the planning board want to ensure that those values stay high but also to ensure they get their tax revenue local municipalities so this is why it's really important to understand where it is you plan to live now a lot of people where they live in a tiny house is dictated by the restrictions we recently bought a community in the mountains of Virginia the local zoning and building restrictions were almost none so if you're planning to live move into a community the great thing about that is the people who own the communities have done that work for you if you plan to live in your own piece of land you're going to want to do that due diligence and find out what are the local building and uh, zoning restrictions and also the legal considerations you want to make sure that you have the proper insurance on your home especially if you live in a community we require all of our residents to have insurance and that covers us that covers them and it covers other people who live in the community now if you're planning to buy a used tiny house you want to ensure that you're getting it from someone reputable but you also want to inspect that tiny house you want to look for any flaws or blemishes or things that look like could be an issue you want to expect all of the electrical systems the plumbing systems the water systems kind of get under the tiny house ensure make sure the structural integrity looks good even maybe have someone who's professional to kind of come in there with you and take a look at it so once you've done all your due diligence and you've gone through the steps that i've mentioned so far it's time to make the purchase now when you make the purchase you definitely want to make sure that you if it's a used tiny house you want to make sure you have a bill of sale and find out if they have the title of the tiny house now if it's a new tiny house you want to make sure that you have a purchase agreement that has all the details if the house is not built yet you want to see timelines you want to look and find out what point do i make the payments and ensure that's all set in stone now once you bought your tiny house congratulations by the way you want to make sure that you have a way to transport it most people don't have a transport vehicle and when i say transport vehicle i mean a truck a heavy duty truck at least three quarter ton depending on the size of the tiny house or a one ton which would be a dually so you'll want to ensure that you hire a reputable transport company now you definitely want to make sure that they're licensed and bonded so if anything were to happen during transport it would be on them it wouldn't be on you because the last thing you want to do is you have your investment go off the side of the road or something crazy happen during transport and then the person who is transporting it can't cover the cost of that damage so you want to make sure that their insurance company can cover that cost in case something were to happen now when the tiny house gets to the property where it's going you want to want to make sure it's set up you want to have it leveled you don't want to put a marble on the floor and the thing just go rolling right you want for the most part to be very level and you also want to have it blocked off you want it to feel solid when you walk now another thing that you definitely want to have in place there's three major hookups you want to have your water your sewer and your electrical typically your water comes in the form of a water hose in most tiny homes it looks just like an rv and your electric for the most part is either 50 amp or 30 amp and that looks just like our RV hookup as well. We do our builds underneath. The great thing about that is it's out of the way. So it goes down and then along with the, the ground, right? Instead of it coming out the back like an RV. Now your black water and gray water. Your black water is going to be anytime you flush a toilet and your gray water is going to be everything else. Showers, washing dishes, washing clothes, all that. You want to make sure that goes somewhere. There's multiple ways you can do it, but it typically comes in the form of a sewer or a septic tank. Sewer is going to be more connected to some sort of municipality. It goes off to the wastewater treatment facility. They take care of it, all that septics when you flush the toilet or whatever water that comes out black or gray water goes down into the tank into a holding tank and gets permeated through the ground and leach fields 
So that's what it's gonna look like. You wanna make sure when you get the tiny house that it's properly secured to the ground, two blocks, leveled off, and you also wanna make sure that all of your hookups are prepared and ready to go, your water, sewer, and electric. That's basically at a really high level, all the steps you need to go through from an initial interest all the way into when your house is set up for you. Now, each one of those steps could easily be its own separate video, and maybe I'll do that in the future, but I wanted to create an all-encompassing kind of like guide for you to kind of walk through the process for moving into a tiny house. If you have any ideas for yourself, make sure you leave them in the comments below. So having said that, that is all the steps that you need to purchase a tiny house. I encourage you to subscribe to this channel because like I said, we'll probably be going through doing some more videos and we ask you to please visit tinyhouselistings.com if you want to browse through tiny houses that are for sale or go to tinyhouselistings.build where you can get more information on the tiny houses that we build. So if you have any more questions or ideas or just any feedback on this video, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.